Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope that you're well. In today's video, you will see that I am in the woods. This is one of my favorite places to take the dog for a walk. Hello, Coco. I have actually lost my camera stand, so I'm literally holding my camera. I don't know about anyone else, but my iPhone, it doesn't have enough memory because I have iTunes on there. So I can't really film very much on my iPhone without it losing all the space. So here I am, this is gonna be really chilled. I'm just gonna be really casual. And I wanna chat about connecting to plant spirits in their natural environment. And I did a vlog last year around a similar time. Tim and I were on a walk in the same woodlands. We are in a different part at that point when I was speaking mostly, I think. And this is quite a long stretch. Someone was just coming, so I had to just pause. This is usually like a path in the woodlands that doesn't get a lot of footfall because it's quite a long one. But I think at the moment, because it's warm and beautiful out here and obviously the time of the year in Devon, People are outside, but it's also cooler today than it has been the last week. It's been so hot. This is like a really unique part of the woods. It's kind of more exposed than other parts, and it's obviously very heavy in the ferns. So I've been connecting to these ferns. I've been reading up a lot about the folklore as well as the magical properties and the herbal properties and correspondences, etc., of the ferns and they have quite a lot of really cool magical properties they can support you on your journey like wayfinding which I really really like because I think that you could utilize this and kind of apply it in a very mystical magical way to connect to spirit to connect on the astral and you know to get into more trance states but also literally as you're traveling you know it was kind of like a traveler's companion it was also carried I believe for good luck and to find one's way and there's some prosperity magic correspondences there as well so I really really enjoy this plant but it's also I believe toxic in parts so fern isn't really a plant that I've worked with all that frequently in my magic but it is a plant that I see a lot when I'm walking around so it is a plant that I've connected to more as a living plant and this leads me on to the basis of what I want to talk about so connecting to plant spirits I talked about it in my vlog previously and I don't know what it is about this topic that makes me feel that like a sit down video just does not feel right and also I'm not the type to you know create these kind of really visual aesthetic cinematic kind of videos for you I'd much rather just be authentic because I'm not going to frolic through the woods and through the fields and have someone else film me and all of that I cannot I just can't um <laughs> so you're going to just get it real here but I do feel like there's something about being in situ you know with the plants when you talk about it and there's something about that kind of chaotic intuitive kind of vibe of communicating the teachings and learning that just goes with the topic and the subject at hand really well I think so I really like to just be in nature I mean I obviously like to be in nature a lot you know I come here to these woods very frequently during the week so it's multiple days a week and I say more in the spring and summer but I try and get here as much as I can because I love it here and bring the dog whether I'm with the kids and Tim or not but I think the reason for like loving being in nature when I talk about this is because I feel like a lot of the tuition actually does come directly from the plants and then direct learning through connecting to the plant spirits and then either you know just enjoying them alive in their local area their natural habitat or you know appreciating the plant as a genus and as a spirit and learning more about actually how to look after how to cultivate how to grow and the properties of that plant you know what family it's part of etc as well as then like the more spiritual the more metaphysical qualities of a plant you know I think that it's just a really beautiful way to experience it and to learn is to get out and so I think that's probably the reason for it so I wanted to share with you here there are so many beautiful wild flowers it's what's considered to be you know weeds basically a lot of them here I have spotted some honeysuckle amidst the brambles and there's just a lot of really really lovely wild flowers as well as ferns, of course. These are common spotted orchids. And then over here, this is hemp agrimony. As I understand, these are part of the Asteraceae family. However, they are not related in any way to hemp or agrimony. It's really interesting to read the folkloric information and then just see what you're connected to, see what you're called to, and then go and research further. And that's a really beautiful way if you spot things that you don't know what they are and you ID them, that's cool. So I've met a few people actually as I've been walking today and some people are more chatty than others which is nice. I usually like to have a little chat with people when I meet them, especially if they have dogs as well, that's really cute. 
so you might find that you see some plants and herbs and trees, shrubs, botanicals, whatever, and you have to ID them a couple of times, that's fine. Like, you don't need to know everything, you know. I've felt really overwhelmed before. I eventually would love to do a proper herbalism course to be a medical herbalist, but that can take years, like up to six years even, and cost thousands. So at the moment, I kind of consider myself like a home self-taught herbalist but I would never recommend anything to anyone like it's all just for me and for my family but I haven't taken a course specifically. I just want to show you this is so beautiful this like lone foxglove. How beautiful. There are more in this woodland but this one just seems to be alone. So stunning. Here's another one they look a little bit scorched by the sun I'm afraid we haven't had a lot of rain recently. So it's really overwhelming when you consider how many herbs plants botanicals that are trees etc that you can get to know and specialize in no herbalist no plant expert will be able to tell you about every single plant herb botanical it's just not possible <laughs> i don't think perhaps perhaps i'm wrong but just i think that i've heard a few herbalists echo that you don't need to know everything about every single herb plant tree etc and especially like from my perspective i'm working with herbs and plants in a spiritual way and in a herbal medicine way as well but a lot of it comes down to connecting to plant spirits and so i don't mind spending time with a plant that i don't know or like these for instance these grasses i will spend a lot of time just happily whiling away the hours you know playing with them and connecting to them and i don't i feel like i don't need to know everything about every single one you know and you can get so overwhelmed with it and think you need to know everything, but that's just not the case. I'll just give you a shot of this, it's beautiful. I found some courses as well that are more home herbalism geared, and I think that's probably the way I will go for now. But at the moment, I'm still slogging through my astrology course, and there's a lot. I have work, I have the kids. Life is just really full, and so I just don't want to take too much on board, but I can always expand my personal studies, and I think that's truly valid, especially if you're just genuinely curious and wanting to learn, and nobody knows everything, and so I just want to say that when you see these videos, no one person is going to have all the answers, no one person is going to know everything and be able to tell you everything. It just is that some people have connections to some plants more than others. So I think that the brambles are so beautiful at this time of year and they are in bloom. I think there's such a lot of protection that can be harnessed, but also this incredible like fierce motherly kind of nurturing. And this is a tree shrub that I have been connected to for my whole life. I feel that it's been with me since I was really young because I always harvested blackberries with my family since I was really little. We always just went to wherever we could, wherever was local to us. So it was it's something that I grew up with. It's something that I'm so familiar with. And I don't even really have any brambles that are like dried at home. I tend to just connect to the plant spirit throughout the year and harvest the fruits. A book that's fantastic is Kareem Boyer's Plants of the Devil because that goes quite in depth about blackberry. And it's just incredible, incredible plant spirit to connect to and get to know. And you know, there's so many beautiful, magical properties to it. I think as well, no one's expecting you to kind of know all of the properties about every single plant and tree herb that you come into connection with. But often it's about building kind of a human connection. Often it's about forming a human, an almost human connection, you know. There's such a sacred reciprocity to connecting with herbal allies in that way. And, you know, I think there are herbalists that kind of look at it purely scientific way. However, you know, a lot of herbalists do tend to be quite spiritual, spiritually inclined, and they do tend to work in this way. So I've come into this field and I just love it. I really feel like this is a place I want to be to perform some rituals. So this is actually where I'd like to come for the solstice. I think that the solstice might be passed by the time I upload this. So I think that it depends what you want to work with plant spirits for really as to how you would approach. But I really feel that building up a connection to whichever herb, plant spirit, botanical you are working with, be that whether you're connecting to it in a magical way to create plant medicine, to cook with or consume in any way, or to literally connect with and petition to support in spells. I think that it's really 
a valuable thing to get to know the plant as much as possible and if you are able to to be with the living plant is just the most powerful that you can actually get in touch with that plant. So a plant that I've connected with quite frequently on my walks and for a number of years is Self Heal or All Heal or Prunella vulgaris. This is a common flowering herb that is found in a lot of wastelands, roadsides, like gardens, and it self seeds. It can be used medicinally as well as in food. So it can be used in salads or stews or soups or and it's a really, really beautiful wildflower. So there is a folkloric poem by Robert Frost. What had that flower to do with being white? The blue prunella, every child's delight. What brought the kindred spider to that height? Make we no thesis of the miller's plight. So generally, this is used for healing the body, like the liver. So it has a lot of healing uses. Part of the mint family, Lamosia family, and it's used to treat things like bowel disease and Crohn's disease. So it's ground up to make medicines in that way. But it's also really, really beautiful for mental health, I found. It can be utilised for healing arthritis as well as sore throat infections and ulcerative colitis and so many skin issues and bruises and there's just a lot that it can support with stomach pains and a number of different bodily ailments. It's a really, really powerful plant. I have utilised it mostly in my practice for mental health work and spiritually connected with it in that way. And I've sat with this plant for a while and that's what I would do. That's the way I would work with the plant first, is to just sit with it in its living environment, in its natural habitat and just connect in that way to look at the stems, the formation of the plant literally, how it grows, look at where it grows to do my research about all of these elements, you know, does it flower, how many petals does it have, how many leaves does it have, does it have opposing leaves or alternate leaves, all of these different kind of aspects of plant properties that you can look into in a physical way. Then also look at the family it's part of and the different folkloric names etc. And just learn as much as you can about the plant as well as just then speaking to the plant. So when I've discovered Prunella vulgaris in grasslands and in my garden for instance I sit with it. I can't really do that right now because I'm literally on a track and there's only like a few here but there was a huge patch earlier however my mum called because I tried to call her earlier. <laughs> so yeah as I said real vlog but I would sit with the plant and literally connect to it. I would touch the parts of the plant unless of course it is toxic and that is different kind of ways of connecting want to be applied. With any toxic herbs, you need to be really cautious and apply different methods of connecting. But for a plant like this, you can absolutely connect in that way. And I would rather just spend some time visiting with the plant several times before uprooting or picking. And then if you get to the point where you have something you'd like to do with the plant and you feel that that connection has been built up, you know, you've been back to the plant and you've talked to the plant, you've connected with it, you've gotten to know it, you've asked it questions about what it can help you with, what it can support with, and would it like to support you, would it like to connect with you, and maybe you've made some offerings as well, that's a really important thing, again I talked about sacred reciprocity, so you can make offerings to the land in which it grows, in terms of water, you can make offerings of menstrual blood, or other bodily fluids, you can pick up trash, any dog poo, anything like that you can pick up, as long as obviously be safe, and don't get any infections, or don't contract any bacteria or anything, you know, just be really safe, be careful, be practical, do what you can, you know, and just take care of your environment. But like, don't go picking. There's another part of the woods that has all of these beautiful bluebells. And I think like, for instance, some people see that as like an opportunity to pick loads. If you aren't even connected to plants and you see a bluebell and you want to pick one for your lover or a friend, whatever. But you know, I would always ask a plant and anyone who I think is spiritually inclined and, you know, connecting to spirits in general is this way minded, you know, that basically they would have that as a courtesy. So I'm going to keep walking because I've kind of looked at that self heal for a while and there's not that many around here. I would have stopped earlier for a patch that was slightly bigger. 
However, my mum called at that moment and I tried to call her before, so I couldn't stop. <gasps> it's so beautiful. Gosh, this place is so enchanting. So often I don't pick any of the plants. As I said, if you have formed a connection to a plant based on sacred reciprocity and you've connected with that plant, you've made offerings, you know, either acts of service or, you know, you've gifted some of your energy perhaps, or you've gifted some water or perhaps some hair, or you've sung to the plant, or perhaps you've offered your voice or a poem or some form of offering, whatever that you see is fit. And you know, not things like dairy, not things like chocolate, not things obviously like salt. I think these are no brainers for most people now, but you wanna offer something that's kind to the earth. I would rather not pour wines or anything on the earth. I know some people do, but I just don't like to do that. So I think water is beautiful. And I also offer my bodily fluids as well to the earth. And I feel like that is something that is for the land as well, for mother earth it's just a way that I like to honor but so I don't tend to harvest much in the way of plants when I'm here and especially with that self-heal although I've been talking about it as a herb and a plant spirit that you may wish to connect to I feel that because there's so few of them even if I wanted to connect back in with self-heal and petition it ask it to support me with particular working I would not feel comfortable in harvesting it from here because there's so few that I have found in this part of the woods so I'd wait until some more came along <sighs> oh. so I think it's it's just really key to get to know whichever plant it is that you want to work with and perhaps you already like I talked about with brambles blackberry I have that connection already so it's much easier to work with blackberry but again like before I would ever harvest I would make an offering and I would also connect in and, and ask for that permission so there's not a whole lot of steps you've got to go through but it's just about like honoring the plants as an animist would so <laughs> animism is a worldview, a paradigm that sees spirit and life in all things and especially in the world on which we live. You know, we've been gifted this incredible utopia in which to live and we choose as humans often to abuse that. I think it's really, really just important to be aware of the way you're treating the land you're on and sometimes, you know, I'm not able to stop to pick up things because I have the children with me and etc but if I can I will stop and pick up things trash etc in all sorts of places sometimes on the school run there's trash there's trash everywhere so and it's just about honoring the land that you're on there's a lot that you can do there's a lot of ecological things that you can learn about my mum is subscribed to the Resurgence magazine and it's like this whole organisation and collective. My mum actually does solstice and equinox meetings online, gatherings, which she's always telling me, oh, you'd love this, you'd love this, because it's really like you and it's earth spirituality. My mum is definitely like a witch, but she, she absolutely has an issue with the word witch, right? So she would not want that label and that's absolutely fine. So I wouldn't call her a witch to her face, but like what she does is basically so and you know I learn aromatherapy with my mum a lot of what I do is based on some of the things that I learned from her you know so although my mum doesn't identify as a witch you know she's she really does align with it and whenever she's been going to the church she's had issues with the dogmatic structures I'm going massively off topic so I've talked about meeting with a plant spirit connecting to a plant spirit forging a connection that continues and that you keep going back to visit with a particular plant spirit herb tree botanical and continue to build that connection build that relationship before you even think about working with them in a magical way or like utilizing the plant matter to create a medicine and I think that's really key, you know, and it's treating these spirits as the living beings that they are and giving them the sacred reciprocity that, you know, that you would like to have. If you just met someone, you wouldn't say, oh, well, I've heard that you're really, really good for helping people get money. So come with me. I'm going to use you right now and put you here in this box and you're going to do this work for me. Like, no, 
obviously, you know, it's not the best kind of structured example, but you know what I'm saying. If someone doesn't know you, why would they help you? And so that is why I come back to what I've said so many times before, which is plant spirit who actually knows you and is an ally for you already will be able to do something so much more powerfully for you. We'll be able to support you so much more with whatever it is that you are trying to do or trying to create or make. I really, really don't like the use of the word use. There is a lot of taking in this whole green witchcraft culture. Don't get me wrong, there may be a time when you do have to order a dried plant, but just try to do that ethically, try to find ethical sources and spend time connecting to the dry plant matter. If you can't connect to the living plant, then you can connect to the dry plant matter. And it works in the same way, you know, hold it in your hands if you can, if it's not toxic and speak to the plant get to know the plant and then listen. <laughs> this is what I didn't say before actually. Listening, listening is key. So you have to actually allow the plant to talk back to you. And sometimes that can take time, which is why building these connections and relationships takes time. So roses, for instance, I have had a very, very deep, profound connection to roses since I was a child. Only now am I so aware of how profound and deep that connection is because it goes back and it's ancestral <laughs> because my paternal grandmother would grow roses in her back garden. She grew so many beautiful flowers, but the roses were incredible. And I've had a number of dreams where the plant spirit has come to me and given me instructions or giving me details, information. I'm receiving downloads, notice messages a lot in my dreams. I always have. Often the plant spirits will come to you in dreams or in visions or in astral travel, in trance states, and you will receive knowledge, gnosis. You know, that doesn't mean that what you've received is exactly the same for everyone else, but for you, yes, listen to that. And especially if it comes from a plant teacher who has worked with your ancestors as well, you know, I think that's really important. And a recent dream I had was maybe a year ago about my grandma. So I met with my grandmother in the dream and she handed me a bottle of rose water, like a glass bottle of rose water. And my grandmother told me that this is what I need and this will help me with what I need to do. I woke up and I was like, whoa, rose water. And so I asked around like in my family, did grandma use rose water on her skin? I'm trying to sort of gauge. I've periodically used rose water on my skin as like a, a tonic, you know, as like a toner. I started again then applying it for that use at that point. And uh, I also consider rose water to be a highly spiritual water for me, utilizing it in love oils and potions. And I utilize rose in a lot of kitchen witchery as well, which you may have seen some of on the channel. There's some recipes. I did a rose infused honey last year, and then I made chocolates with those. And I have a rose elixir, which I made last year, which is made from roses, honey and brandy. And it's just beautiful. It's so heart healing. And I feel like it's a heart healer. It's like similar in the way that Hawthorne is that heart healing. I really feel like my connection with Rose is so strong. Sometimes you have to use the word use, but just understand that it's not about using these plants, taking what you want. It's about connecting with them. And so right now with Rose, my work has been to concentrate upon planting and caring for nurturing roses in my space. So I have some roses in my back garden and my husband and I are planning to get some more varieties of rose. There are some local dogwood roses and obviously there's so many different types of roses. I am spending time connecting to a number of different types of roses and working with them, understanding them as well as then nurturing them and tending to them. And then there's rose in some of my oils, there's rose in some of my spells as well as in some of my recipes and in some of the tinctures that I create but I haven't petitioned Rose, I haven't asked Rose to do anything for me recently other than the self-love beautification oil I made recently which is on my channel. It's kind of like an attraction, glamour, beauty, self-love oil. It kind of for me does all things really and it's a very powerful oil. I've been making it for a number of years but the recipe has changed, adapted and I love it. So that's probably a frequent application for rose in my practice. So my very long-winded, you know, very casual, very shaky vlog walk video has just been going around this whole thing really that it's about meeting, connecting to, honoring, sacred reciprocity, making offerings, doing the work, you know, putting in the service, doing the work and learning, understanding, 
getting to know the plant spirits, always asking for permission. So rather than looking at the forest like, you know, a buffet or a candy store or... It feels so transactional, which it is not. It has to be so much more than that. This is such a beautiful little spot here to sit if you wanted to. So I might sit here with these grasses. As I said, like literally just get to know them. I really, really find these to be very, very comforting and really, really great for like peace. So rather than like looking at this space like it's a vending machine, you know how there's that talk around deities and how some people sort of think it's a bit like that, like you just pick a deity off the shelf who you want to work with in that moment or you have a deity vending machine. A bit like that, rather than looking at it like that because it's so transactional, I consider this to be like a place where I find home and family and lived connections, living connections, you know, living, breathing, manifestations of existence and life and joy and abundance like there's so much abundance I mean it's just all around and that's I guess what our wheel our seasons celebrate and so instead of seeing it in that transactional way I prefer instead to look at it in that ancestral lineage familial way and consider these spirits to be friends and allies and that is why the use of the term allies is applied so frequently but you can't call yourself an ally of anything unless you are doing some kind of work either supportive gathering awareness you know honor all of these things that is part of it basically it's not a deep science to connect to plant spirits and i'm sure even if this idea is new to you i'm sure you've done it before without even really knowing you know just sitting in a space of nature and meditating you will be connecting to what's around you it's just whether or not you're listening so connecting in listening as i said sacred reciprocity all of those things and that's how you can really get to know your plant spirits around you and learn perhaps which plant spirits you already have that kinship with and that familial connection with via ancestors or through your own lived memory you know because there will be some plants that are way more familiar for you already so even if you feel like you're starting from scratch just go out into your back garden if you have one go out into your local park go out into whatever natural space you can get to whatever's closest and here is a beautiful patch of all heel again not many though but still if I wanted to I might ask to sit and connect and then if I needed to for anything I could sit and connect and ask make that request. Sometimes as well the answer might be no. I just feel into it and sometimes it is no. I've worked with a number of trees or plants for instance that you know I've connected with previously and everything's been wonderful and you know when I've asked for permission they graciously allowed me to harvest some of their bounty to support me in whatever it was I'm doing and I consider that to be a strong ally but then if you ask again another day it might be a no and also the trees trees specifically I feel like they are connected but there are individual spirits that can live within the tree so you might have an actual fae or elemental or a dryad or some other form of entity living within a tree because they are little houses really sturdy big houses I suppose so it might be that there are a number of entities spirits living within a tree so i think that's why you might have that difference with trees and that's just something i found again it's a really personal kind of practice operative kind of practice you actually have to just do it you have to just do it and you can read books so books resources i mentioned kareem boyer kareem boyer has a number of books books that i have loved uh, plants of the devil under the bramble arch the witch's cabinet there's another one I'm forgetting and then there's the Dream Plant Spirits book as well which I've read and they are fantastic books I would highly recommend. Then there's also other herbalism books like Mrs. Greaves, Paul Beryl, Daniel A. Shulk, Beneficium and 13 Pathways of Occult Herbalism if you want to get more into some toxic plant spirits working with them. And just so I'm clear because I've had some questions, I personally myself have never harvested a toxic plant to work with in this way. It's not to say you can't do it. Hecate's Garden, for instance, by Cindy Brennan. In that book, Cindy talks about foxglove and connecting with foxglove and actually there are some spells and uses for foxglove within that. However, there are precautions you need to take if you are doing that kind of thing. 
these are also plants that I can't have in my space. I can't have these in my garden because I have two small children and two animals. I have a cat and a dog and I'm just not risking that. We did have some black nightshade which is different to deadly nightshade. It's different to Tropobelladonna but it is part of that family. It is toxic in parts but not as toxic and it's not necessarily a killer. I say necessarily because for some with we communities it could be you know and I'm no medical expert and also if you read Kobe Michael's The Poison Pathway you will learn so much more about the scientific side of things and actually how dosage is so important and also specific plants and the mystery the enigmatic quality of the toxic properties of a plant you won't necessarily know how toxic a plant is just by looking at it, just by knowing what it is. It completely depends and different parts of different plants are more or less toxic than others as well. So again with that kind of thing it's a completely different area. So I had some questions in my Folk Rich vlog about utilising baneful herbs. I have only ever connected to baneful herbs in a spiritual way. If I found them in the wild such as foxglove or nightshades I have literally just connected spiritually I haven't even touched them but I have received some quite specific answers and you know downloads from them and so I can say I do have connections to those spirits but they're not as strong as plants that I work with and commune with and touch and I don't work along these lines very frequently because of the reasons I said I can't keep these plants however I like to work with plants like mugwort, Artemisia vulgaris, wormwood as well, same family, Artemisia family, and you know other plants like that that have those sort of mild psychotropic hallucinogenic kind of qualities to them. I'm going to take a seat. I think as well, as I said, like if you want to read more about working with baneful herbs, start with Kobe Michael's The Poison Pathway. This is some mugwort that I found locally to me, but I forgot to mention Harold Roth's book, which is Witch and Herbs, which is also incredible. Then move on to Daniela Schulk's work, but it, it's more academically written and sometimes quite flowery as well, sometimes quite poetic. So it doesn't read in the same way, but start with Kobe Michael's book, see how you get on. And then I highly recommend that the other books that I've mentioned. And I am planning on creating a video soon. Obviously, if you work with Hecate as a deity, I would highly recommend Cindy's books, especially Hecate's Garden. It is fantastic, beautiful, beautiful book. So yeah, there are a number of books that I would recommend and I'm going to do some more videos on which books you can go to for this kind of work. So I want to just say thank you so much for joining me. It's been quite a long one, I think, and it's been very casual. It's been nice. I hope that I have said everything I wanted to say. You know, I've given some personal gnosis, some personal experiences, and I've also talked about the general ways in which you need to go about this work, how it's so personalised, how you need to just get out there, practice in the field, literally. That is part of the work. But, you know, as I said, I'm not a professional herbalist. I cannot and I won't prescribe anything other than research, really, and safety precautions always. So that also includes the mundane safety aspects if you're coming out to the woods. Make sure someone knows where you are, make sure you've got a phone, make sure you've got water, make sure you've got bug spray, suntan lotion, whatever it is you need, you know, for security and protection. Just go forth and connect to plant spirits. See what's in your local area, you know, and start there. There might be a plant that you wanted to connect to but that isn't native for you and maybe now is not the time for you and that plant spirit but there'll probably be another one that is local to you. And also one thing that I found is that in my spaces, in my gardens, over time and around my local vicinity, plants have made themselves known to me as and when I was needing them, as and when I was ready for them. So several years ago, I was searching heavily for a mullein. It took me a long, long time. And eventually I found a mullein. That mullein is now gone. I don't know where that mullein is. I cannot find it anymore. But I was able to harvest some of that mullein at the time. I'd already worked with the plant, calling to it and connecting to it and asking for its support. And it, it made itself known to me. Similarly, I have struggled to find wild mugwort in my area. I have grown my own. I have that in my back garden and it's doing very well. I recently found some a five minute walk from my house and I'm thrilled. I work very closely with mugwort. So this is that mugwort and since I recorded this video I've found another two mugwort plants very close by near me. It made itself known to me. 
Mugwort. So it's uh, a thrilling thing when a plant does that, when it appears, and they will come to you as well. They will find you. And often if a plant appears and you're like, oh, who are you? And then you plant ID them and you start learning about them, you start researching, you will have a kind of moment where you realize that actually that plant's come to you for a reason. You know, that like you were supposed to connect to that plant and actually that's there for a reason. That plant has something to teach you. It's really powerful and really beautiful. So I wish you all the best with your journey. I hope that you have enjoyed this. If you have any questions for me, please leave them below. Do connect, ask me any questions. If you have any comments or ideas, suggestions for further videos, do like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Also, please do join me on Patreon if you'd like more from me. I post new and full moon forecasts with shadow work and tarot spreads and there's two tiers, Discord server and lots of things that I offer there. I also have an Instagram and I have a TikTok as well, but it's not so active. My batch is about to go, so I'm going to say goodbye. I hope you enjoy this leave me a little plant emoji below i look forward to seeing you again in another video really soon take care bye